Okay, so hello and welcome to another episode of Engage with E-Commerce. Today I'm delighted to be joined by my wonderful co-host, Eloise. Hello, Eloise. Hi, hi everybody. Thanks. Um, I'm Eloise. I'm CEO of Sell Beyond. I help uh, companies grow on Amazon in French, German, Spanish, Italian, Dutch and English. Perfect. And today... Uh, so Nathan Lomax, Quickfire Digital. We're an e-commerce focused digital transformation agency. We help clients maximize efficiency, profitability and scalability through the use of technology, typically within WordPress and Shopify. And so today, Eloise, we're going to be talking about M-commerce or mobile commerce, as you may have seen it. Now, shopping is going mobile and there's no denying that. But the big question we're going to go through today is are retailers getting on board? Because it's far too often, am I seeing uh, people understanding that we're going mobile? but they're not putting in the legwork to go mobile first. And that's something we're gonna to discuss today. So talking through today's session, the first thing we'll do is just a quick definition of what M-commerce is. We'll look at how M-commerce or mobile commerce is actually not necessarily always getting the sale, but it's certainly helping the sale. And therefore we've got to make sure that experience is appropriate. We'll talk about Amazon and its use of mobile first. We'll talk about Shopify and its use of mobile first. We'll look at some facts and figures. Don't just take our words for it. Here's some industry stats. Then we'll look at the advantages of mobile commerce, the disadvantages, and hopefully by the end, we can kind of summarize and, and make everyone listening, watching and watching afterwards that actually mobile isn't going away. You can't ignore it and you need to have it at the front and center of your digital strategy. And here's how. Exactly right. <laughs> That's how we're getting. Okay, a little, so little bit of housekeeping, please. No worries. Um, for those of you watching now on Zoom, um, when you close your Zoom, There'll be an option to um, another website will come up and you can leave us feedback. If you'd like to have a call with me looking at your Amazon listings, Amazon strategy, you can select that option. If you'd like a call with Nathan to do a website audit or an e-commerce strategy, um, you can select that as well. And we'd love to catch up with you and give you some time if that's what you need. Perfect. So what is M-commerce? And M-commerce is a term that's been banded around. Is a it well, ish, right? Now, interestingly, M-commerce or mobile commerce, everyone just says you're just purchasing on mobile. So the definition I've found and the definition that seems to be going with is it's anything to do with a financial transaction completed using your mobile phone. I already got bored. What does that mean? <laughs> so it's not just a physical, okay, I've purchased this product. There's loads to it. There's mobile shopping. There's mobile banking. There's mobile wallets. There's contactless mobile payments. There's mobile point of sale. There's money transfers, if you've used something like a transfer wise or something like that. So M-commerce is huge and it's only going to get bigger as more and more people decide, you know what, I no longer want to go to the bank to pay in my checks or to transfer money. I no longer want to go in store to make my purchases. I no longer want to do something the manual way. It's all at my fingertips and it's all here on this little device. But I don't like that. This, I decided I don't like that um, definition because we were just talking earlier that mobile is just not about the transaction, that a lot of people, pretty much everybody is going to start their browsing experience on mobile. They're going to be on the sofa watching TV, flicking through something and, oh, I need to Google that. Yeah. So actually, mobile commerce can't just be the transaction. It's got to be the browsing experience. It will interesting because the definition of mobile commerce obviously is the transactional piece, but it's far bigger than that, as you quite rightly identified, because there's some silly stats which we'll come to shortly that says actually um, some ordinary amount of traffic starts on mobile like you say you go through a series of micro signals if you like or micro intent which is i have an interest in this product and i'll go to that slide now actually so you can see it but i found this fascinating that as we go through mobile not only carries out the sale but it also helps with the sale so the example i always use is this imagine you know you need something for your kitchen Okay, so that's an I need moment or a micro signal. Okay, so I need something for my kitchen. What do you do? You go online and you type in items for the kitchen or utensils in the kitchen. You then define that you need something, but then you think, okay, well, I know I need a spatula, but what spatula? So then you start sifting through which ones. Okay, is it this spatula? Is it this one? Is it this brand? Is it that brand? And then you go again and you say, okay, I've identified I need something for the kitchen. I've identified I need a spatula, but now I want to buy it. And so there's three types of micro intent which should be signaled. And the reason I share this with you is because it's our duty as retailers to help people at every stage of that process. So can you offer content that helps people with the I need moments, which might be a blog article, which might be some kind of comparison that might be something else. Can you help them with the which one to say, okay, this one's been purchased the most, this one's most popular, here's some reviews, here's some feedback. 
Or actually, if they want to just buy it, can you help there as well? Can you offer FAQs? Can you offer live chats? How can you be the most helpful as possible to guide people through that e-commerce journey? Okay, I've got a dumb question for starters, Nathan. Sure. Given that I work on Amazon and don't know anything about websites really, is there a way, that, is there stuff that you can do that just presents on mobile devices and not on desktops? Like if you want to make this mobile first experience, you can make your website switch into mobile uh, sure. if you're on a mobile browser, right? But yeah, is there anything different... that you can only show to mobile users and not, de and not desktop and vice versa? Sure, you can show different features or elements. I mean, gone are the days really where you'd have a totally different standalone site, but you can limit unchanged content based on what people see. I mean, we're even going as far as saying you can limit and change content, not only by device, so not only from desktop to mobile, but also by user. Imagine if I can give you a totally tailored experience to that of someone um, like myself or to someone listening today. So, I mean, it's, it's getting ridiculously um, complex. And actually, I think before we get into that and the personalization and all that good stuff, the first thing is just making sure that your experience is suitable for mobile and that you've got mobile at the forefront of your decision making. You're not any longer thinking of mobile as an afterthought. Okay, so what do we, what do we need to do then? So I think the first thing to do would be when you're going through a new site build or you're looking at your current site, would be to look at the mobile and say, okay, is this as intuitive as possible? Are things easy to access? And can they get through? I mean, it's no different to desktop, right? We've talked for weeks on this show now about how we're easily guiding people through the sales process and how we're getting them from one stage of the funnel to the other. Mobile's no different. But because typically people just allow the desktop to render down into mobile, what we have is that you have something that was front and center on a mobile is now actually put uh, on a desktop, sorry, is now pushed really far down the phone. So we just need to think about prioritization. I think if you take away anything from this section, it would be remember to prioritize your modules on mobile as well as desktop, because just rendering it down, you could have something miles out of place. It sounded like jargon. So walk, walk me through. We've got a desktop. There's loads of fancy bells and whistles, things, yeah. tags, um, lots of different sections, blogs, contact, la, la, la. If we're going to put that in mobile experience, it's front and center. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about our user journey and what actually is relevant to but can we then make it so it's super browser friendly or super transaction friendly like yeah well i would just look to simplify the process like i say essentially all this platform is is a funnel right just like a desktop website is so how can we give them what they need front and center so let's say you're buying shoes okay and the first thing you've come onto the website you've seen a slider well actually sometimes a slider isn't great on mobile because it's normally all squished down and the text is titty and the picture doesn't render down properly and it really ruins the experience. So how can you get something front and center that's useful? Is it a static image rather than a slider? Is it perhaps a featured promotion or something like that? It's really important that all we're trying to do is nudge people along the funnel. And that's exactly what the mobile experience should help us to do. I mean, I don't know how it differs to Amazon. I mean, can you change how an Amazon page looks on mobile to desktop? I guess not. No, Amazon's already got that locked down. But what you should be doing, and um, and I think I said to you before, I speak to Amazon companies, companies selling on Amazon all the time, and I don't think I've spoken to one company this year that's even brought up mobile as something that's important in the first part of our conversation. You need to be doing things that will make it easy to browse on uh, Amazon. And we'll go there to it in a sec. I think we're just, um, do you want me to slide back to why it's important, Amazon or not Amazon? Sure. Or I can just dive right in with some screen shares otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to quickly whiz through some facts and figures before we got started because there are two different sides. We'll dive into Amazon properly and we'll dive into Shopify properly and show you how both platforms you can utilize mobile to its best effect. But actually, some facts and figures around mobile commerce to say, look, don't just take our word for it. Don't just listen to us. These are the actual facts, okay? So by 2021, it's predicted that 54% of total e-commerce sales will be mobile. Okay, this is massive. This is absolutely massive. So we need to take mobile into consideration. It needs to be at the forefront of what we do. Now e-commerce sales are going to break $4 trillion, which <laughs> when I was reading the stats, I was trying to struggle to get my head around. I thought, $4 trillion, that's ridiculous. But with more than 50% of traffic coming from mobile, with mobile first indexing, as we talked about before we came on air, being a thing, and actually two point, well, just over 2 billion sales on mobile in 2020, can you really afford not to embrace mobile? And I don't think I'm terrified already. What am I doing on my own website for mobile experience? Nathan, you've already nudged me down the funnel, right? <laughs> 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 I need a website with you, right? But right. I guess the, um, 
the yeah fundamentally 50 percent of people are likely to be buying on mobile we've all got to take it seriously this is now a thing yeah exactly right so Eloise, tell me a little bit about amazon i'm intrigued to see how obviously in my world i understand about wordpress and shopify and websites and how they couldn't behave with the mobile experience, but what does Amazon allow you to do, if anything? So Amazon has already got everything locked down. That's why we love it and we hate it in equal measure. So Amazon, all that fancy, schmancy words about rendering and stuff like that, like Amazon will always already choose a lot of the stuff in terms of what they give you if you're on desktop, if you're on tablet and on mobile. And fundamentally, um, what you want on Amazon is to be on page one and you want to make it easy for customers to figure out really quickly whether they should want to buy your product. So that means proper photos and essentially titles. If people are searching for something on Amazon, Amazon being a search engine, they want to see your stuff. Now, a real real uh, technical but uh, important example is the length of the titles. So Amazon gives you 200 word, 200 character limit for your titles. However, on mobile, they may only display up to 80 characters. So you need to be sure that the words that are important are well up front, as in in the first, let's say, five or six words, because Amazon's going to show less than they might if, um, if it was on a, um, uh, a desktop. And I've just got a, 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 oh, if you just enable screen sharing there, Nathan. Yeah, sure. There we are. I've got a real quick example here. Hold on a sec. Um, is if we sh go through here we've got a, a water bottles brand quite well known called Chili so this is what you get on Chili's um, you could get that on mobile you're going to see a lot less than if we um, can we get there uh, I hate it yeah here we are receive a share oh no sorry Eloise completely failed with the screen share if we go on, if we go on um, so, ah, there we are. If we go on, if we look at this, this is a desktop. We can see that down here at the bottom, all these best-selling bottles. We see a lot, a lot of words. What you should have seen in um, in the previous slide, and I'll bring it up again, is if we are on here, which is the mobile search, we have got a lot, lot fewer words. Like really simply, you're probably only at 80 characters here. We've got as far as uh, reusable reusable watts they're stainless steel i mean you know arguably am i just picking at little small things but let's face it these are water bottles amazon is really competitive are we grabbing um our viewers attention in the first five seconds we could say that this wasn't a really great sponsored um ad because we can't actually see what they're selling that that's really the the fundamentals from the start of are you grabbing your attention in 80 characters uh, on Amazon with the title and then as we go through the whole listing there are similar choices to be made so Amazon is doing the rendering for us but I do not know any customer that I had in the entire year and any anybody I've spoken to that even has really thinks about it um, have we uh, uh, mobile optimized our, our, our content and do you think they're missing a trick by Sorry? Do you missing a trick by not doing it? Do you think it would improve conversion rate if they said, actually, let's create our titles with mobile first, and then at least on desktop, they're definitely going to fit in, and mobile, they'll look smart as well? Well, Nathan, I've just seen a fact, which is 55% of people are, are going to be shopping on mobile this year, right? And half of all transactions are going to be mobile. So it stands to reason, if you haven't even thought about it, you're missing the trick. And do you have to change assets and, and things like that based on mobile or desktop, or actually does it just render down automatically? On well, Amazon? I've seen some, um, there are some, I've seen some YouTube videos of people that are all about the, the pixel hacks you can make on mobile and like get yourself another, you know, bit of real estate by hacking your photos in a particular way. I, I think life's, personally, I think life's too short to go that far. Sure. Um, but you do want to make sure the sizes are slightly different. You do want to, you, you want to look at it. I think you should look at it. Um, on mobile, on tablet, as well as on desktop as a baseline. Yeah, interesting. And so you, when you're doing Amazon, you would still go desktop first and then find an appropriate experience for tablet and mobile as opposed to mobile back up the chain. I think that the real issue um, for people selling on Amazon is that Amazon has an interface called Seller Central where you manage your inventory, you manage the advertising, you manage marketing and the logistics. And typically you're going to be running Seller Central from your desktop. So I think that thing means that as a default, you're uploading content, you're looking at your images and you're testing, make sure it all, it's such a pain of a platform anyway, you're probably doing that as desktop. And the question is, 
have you in the last six months looked at your Amazon listing from the Amazon app or from Safari or Chrome on mobile? Like start there because, because the way you edit it has to be in that way. I think people don't necessarily think of their own listings in that way. For sure. And I'm sure, and I'm sure for you, for you, right. You, you work with a lot of different companies and you, you said, I think before we came on air that um, you do, you are starting to get a lot of people that come and brief for a new website thinking that they have to improve the mobile experience. Yeah. A lot of people are now coming to us and saying, look, we've, what's rich saying here we'll come back to that we'll come back to that rich i'll happily um, answer that so we're looking at interestingly so many briefs are coming to us at the moment and saying we need to replatform, not because their desktop site isn't fit for purpose but because their mobile experience is so poor because it's been neglected and so more and more people are saying look can we start with mobile and extrapolate out because we know the rise in mobile and the importance of it which i found really interesting and that's why it's been amazing during lockdown and before that to as we moved over to Shopify and started doing more and more work in Shopify and you start to see some of the kind of mobile first features that comes with the platform. And that's something I'll be sharing shortly is actually a lot of this stuff has already been thought of. And it's only then when you start to look at other platforms, you go, wow, why has that not got that? Oh, why is that not a standard? And that that's fascinating. The so actually working with Shopify as a platform, um, they are making your life easier in a certain way because they're providing you tools. I would, one of the questions I'll have back at you is, in all of the different websites that, that you help people build, rebuild up, maintain, yeah. update, is there a certain segment of people that are not thinking of mobile? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, and not in terms of necessarily their customers, is there a, an industry vertical where people are more lax? I'm, I don't know, for example, pubs and hotels, or I don't know, you know, lawyers, or what, what have you? So there's a massive difference between sales and marketing, right? And for us, we market as an e-commerce focused digital transformation agency. So e-commerce being the primary word there. However, of course, with sales, we're often getting asked to build brochure sites and things like that. And so you're obviously working in a whole range of different industries. And sometimes just the mobile experience isn't seen as important. Now, hotels, I'd push back and say, you tell me who now books a hotel and doesn't check it out on their mobile while they're flicking through in bed with their other half and say, oh, I like this one. What about this one, et cetera. I think that's really important. But there are some industries that like construction, for example, or something like that. Are you going to choose your builder? Uh, on a mobile or actually maybe maybe not and there'll be certain industries like that where actually yeah again and, and all this data is available right so rather than us just creating thoughts and, and hypotheses it'd be to go and check it out but i would imagine even things like i don't know funeral homes originally we've had some funeral home clients and originally it would be really desktop led but now and now if there's an emergency someone's died you need to sort this all out what's the first thing you do? You, you, your mobile is glued to you at all times. You're going to go and sit down on the desktop or you're going to flick through and, and find out what to do. And so many people, when we were working with that client, it was so interesting to find out so many people don't know what to do if someone passes. And I was like, yeah, this is amazing. Actually, you don't. So what's the first thing you do? You Google it. Google, we've become so no, right. so none of us on just Google. And there was, there's this really interesting stat I was going to share with you, which is 60% uh, of millennials use mobile when cooking as like a sous chef so just think of that you're cooking your stuff and and those are maybe a slightly older generation will remember the recipes will remember the ingredients or maybe have a, a bit if more you're a slightly older generation you've already forgotten it Nathan, i'm telling you I'm <laughs> you might be able to improvise it right because you've got some base but as a as a millennial you would just go with the whole oh, okay well google tell me what to add next tell no, me no, what can i do with two carrots some cauliflower and a piece of bacon every every <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, think, I, I think we 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 we're, we're arguing with ourselves here. We can't we can't deny it. How can businesses grasp the metal? How can businesses grasp the metal? What are, okay, the, we people that have uh, e-commerce websites right now, they may be not thinking of an entire new build. What what are the top three things we need to think about? Just look at your mobile experience. The first thing would be look at your mobile experience, it, critique it. Is it fit for purpose? Is it easy? And are you creating unnecessary bottlenecks? So the amount of mobile sites I see, like I say, they've been rendered down, okay. But at the same time, they're now making it so difficult for me to get through the funnel that I don't bother. The whole reason I'm going on mobile in the first place is because I'm strapped for time and it's convenience. So we need to start thinking, like we talked about last week, we talked about omni-channel retailing versus multi-channel retailing. Stop putting your brand front and center and start putting your customer front and center. So it's not about, oh, do I find it as Nathan and my business? Do I find it nice and easy? She said, no, does your customer find it nice and easy to be able to purchase a product on the platform that's convenient to them? It might be desktop, but it might not be. It might be mobile. 
And so that to me is really important. What else would I encourage you to do? I'd encourage you to try and create some kind of immersive experience so you're standing out from the crowd. Uh, I really, I can't wait. That sounds expensive, Nathan. No, it's not. It's not. It used to be. It used to be. AR and VR is a massive lack of information or lack of research or education. Or I don't know what it is, but so many people hear AR and VR and are like, oh, it's going to be really expensive. I can assure you that actually there are cheap ways to get to market. Yeah, okay, it might not be a virtual fitting room, but at the same time, there are lower points of entry that allow you to try things on, that allow you to try things in uh, in your home. I was working with a client recently, a furniture client, and we were looking at some kind of a VR, AR style technology where we could literally put something, I'd hold my phone up like this, and I'd hold, hold it up against the wall, and then I could see, just here, I could see this little, this kind of furniture piece appearing. And I can be like, okay, how does it look? Am I happy with it? No, that doesn't really go. That's amazing. Imagine, I'm sure it was Dulux, the paint company, that also did something similar, where you could change the color of your wall before going through the hassle of changing it and covering it in emulsion or whatever and painting it and all that hassle. Why not just test it first? And rather than just putting a splodge near the light switch, as most people do, why don't you just actually hold something up and say, you know, well, that looks terrible in red. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to paint my wall black. That's a stupid idea. Um, so yeah, that would be the second thing, make it immersive. And the third thing would be look at your mobile checkout options because so many people will go through all the hassle of getting a mobile fit for purpose experience. But then we get to checkout and it's still, oh, we're just going to use um, Sage Pay or World Pay or Stripe, whatever. And it can be quite clunky on mobile. Yeah, look at like some of the mobile wallet options available. They're phenomenal, like Google Wallet, who doesn't use it? And again, more and more people when you're in store now won't use your wallet. You just tap on your phone, right? Just beep and off you go. It's, it's amazing where we're going. But it's important that we hop on the bandwagon as opposed to letting it ride past us and, and being stuck in the sludge. So what I wanted to talk about with everyone today is around the, the, the Shopify piece I was just touching on because I think it's really important that if you are on Shopify, that you are, you're aware of these features. And if you're not, then you consider them. So the mobile checkout functionality is built in within the shopping cart and checkout. And that to me is really important. Sometimes with other platforms, you're having to kind of crowbar this stuff in. And one thing here, which is really sounds techy, but it's not as techy is the level of PCI DSS compliance. And so what that means is, oh, I know, I know, I know it sounds boring, but it's not right. It's important, especially if you're running a big e-commerce store, you need to make sure you're treating your clients data sensitively and you're taking the appropriate measures. And that allows us to do that, right? The customizable mobile themes is quite important. And so actually there are mobile themes out there. If you don't want to go to someone like us and have it custom built, you might be able to just find a theme out there kind of off the shelf. And the last thing is about you can actually manage your store on your phone now. You haven't got to do all your changes on a desktop, manage all your track, your inventory and everything all on a computer. You can now do it on the move with your mobile phone, which I think actually is a suite of kind of products or tools makes Shopify an incredibly attractive proposition. I and so oh, Amazon seller app, same thing. And, and not, customers don't, don't realize that they can. They can also, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend an entire optimization of your Amazon listings on the seller app, but yeah, you can also do that with the seller app. So this is right. So Magento one was deprecated a couple of days ago. I mean, it's no longer supported, right? So we're getting so many people coming to us and saying, Oh, we don't know what to do. Do we go to Magento two? We've heard it's got stacks of problems. Is it right for us? And you know what? It might be right for some brands. It's not for me to say, don't do it. At the end of the day, some people get on great with Magento, but at the same time, more and more people are saying, look, if we're going to pivot, now's the time to pivot. Let's go to Shopify. Let's go to Shopify plus, and let's make sure we're creating something that's got longevity and sustainability. Is, and it, is Magento harder for mobile experience? No, not at all. Not at all. It's, it's wrong with me to, to shoot Magento down. Like Magento is an incredibly powerful platform and right for the right brand. But at the same time, the way Shopify and Shopify Plus is coming up through the ranks and becoming the fastest growing e-commerce platform, it would be naive not to consider it within your CMS, content management system, mix. So rather than just saying, oh, we've done Magento for years, we're going to do Magento, just think about actually, and not even just Shopify, right? WordPress, WooCommerce, will that be suitable? Possibly, possibly not. What about some other online options? Could you go Presta Shop? Could you go something else? Can you go open cart? There's loads of them. If you have a languishing Magento site and you're now thinking, okay, well, 50% of my customers are definitely going to be browsing me on mobile and probably buying me on mobile on my desktop uh, focused site of a couple of years old Magento. What we can say is Shopify has easy options for mobile. 
yeah, I think a lot of people will start to look for excuses when they're looking to replatform because they don't want the hassle. So the, typically the, the reasons people replatform are normally around cost. Sometimes you can get quite chunky monthly costs when you're working with an enterprise platform such as Magento. And therefore you start to think, okay, well, what about sure if you can reduce cost, but then they'll be like, okay, that's great. We've reduced cost, but what about this? What about the compliance? What about this? What about that? Have they thought about this? Well, actually there's a little bit to say, you know what? They have thought about this and mobile is kind of treated as a first mobile first experience. So yeah, don't rule it out is all I'd say. No, fair, fair point, fair point. And I'm just thinking now of, um, we had the Q and A to, um, oh, it's dis disappeared or it's on the chat, I think, isn't it? Um, yeah, it Amazon yeah. sales made more on the app or the mobile website. I have just, um, <laughs> while we're speaking, I've just looked that up. App users account for 42% of smartphone visits with um, visits to Amazon.com making 58%. So it looks like it's kind of a little bit under half that use the app and a little bit over half that will be using Chrome or Safari on, on their phones. But that suggests that a lot of people are using the Amazon app. So, so now I'm giving you two challenges. If you've got an Amazon store, one thing to do this month would be to look on Safari or Chrome or whatever mobile browser you have, but also download the app and see how it looks different on the app because it will look different. And then start to think, is there any way I can simplify this experience for people and make it seamless? The interesting, so great stat, Thanks, something. the interesting stat I found was that 90% of shoppers when browsing on mobile already know what they want to purchase, which are, they know the specific brand, right? When they begin shopping. So yet actually we kind of think, oh, they're just going to use the mobile to kind of browse and then choose. No, no, they've already made up their mind. So why are you putting bottlenecks in the way? Why are you making it difficult when you could just say, oh, you know what you want to buy? Perfect. Come and buy it. Here's a place to buy it. In three steps, you can have it on your doorstep. Well, I think that's a, that's a great um, a great point as well. And I, you know, I'm an Amazon fan just because I'm lazy and I live in a rural area and I hate shopping. Um, but you and I were talking: do we do we browse on mobile? Do we compare and contrast on mobile? And the answer is, I don't. I just go straight to Amazon because I want my life to be simple. Um, it depends on the relevant experience of your of your consumers, right? But you think you were even saying, Nathan, that it's not something you sit and you're not going to flip for many things between five different sites. I say it's all depending on the price for me. Again, it depends on the type of shopper that you're catering for. Uh, and actually, you'd be able to identify that in your ideal customer profile to say, look, what are you selling? Are you selling jeans and shoes and food hampers? Or are you selling luxury holidays or, um, yeah, big expensive plastic surgeries or whatever? Like, there's, so, there's a whole range of things, right? But actually, if I'm shipping kind of three, four, five thousand pounds, I would absolutely do some research to see if I can get it at a better price than what people are saying. But if I'm selling widgets for... 25 30 pounds am i really that bothered if i pay 32 pounds for it and that totally depends just because that's me it doesn't mean it's everybody so the only thing i would say is just make sure that you understand your customer and we say this week in week out and yet hopefully the yeah understand your customer and just because you as an individual as a store owner don't use mobile to compare because you're in a totally different position are your customers in that same position or actually are customers totally different and actually may have totally different purchasing habits. So the next thing we're going to start to look at as we come towards the end is, is looking at some advantages and disadvantages of mobile commerce. I've had great fun in the last couple of weeks learning more about mobile commerce and learning about why we could use it, why we couldn't use it. And I think it's really important to go through some of these together. So an advantage of mobile commerce, of course, is we're giving a better user experience. It's much more convenient for an end user who realistically wants to go, well, right now you can't go in store, even if you wanted to. And that's a big thing, right? A coronavirus, certainly for our business, has forced more people to say, you know what, we can't just rely on our bricks and mortar store. We can't just have it built and think that people will come because they physically can't come. So we have to upgrade our online proposition. That's been massive. So actually giving a better user experience where people can go, you know what, I don't want to go in store. I'm busy. I haven't got the time. It's a long way away. I just want to do that. So go online, click, collect, done. The next thing is around the integration of augmented reality. I talked to you before we came on air, Eloise, around Gap and Topshop. And there's different virtual fitting rooms. Like that's the way we're going as a society where you can physically, well, I say physically, you can try something on and be like, oh, okay, this is how this dress looks. This is how this shirt looks. And then eventually, how do we add the next layer to that, which is some kind of personal shopper? And I'm working on a project with someone at the moment, which is just that. How can we add that personalization piece on top of the 
ARV RP. So all of a sudden you're looking at something, you're thinking, okay, this looks good. And then you get someone else here saying, you know what, yellow is not your color or actually you're looking great in that suit. Brilliant. So all I'm hearing here is advantages for the consumer and cost for the present business. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's about return on investment. So yeah, of course, it's going to be cost. Let's not like the, most things will come at a cost. <laughs> but actually, is there opportunity? There absolutely is. So let's also think about some of the other advantages. We talked last week around on the channel and how we can create less friction. Well, if you take a mobile first approach, then by definition, we're starting to say, okay, well, let's make mobile consistent with install and let's make it the same with desktop and let's bring it all together rather than this whole mobile is a bit of the ugly duckling and it will just be a different price and a, a different look and feel and we'll come to it as an afterthought. No, let's get it in as a front and center. Okay. That's really yeah. So any disadvantages? Yeah, disadvantages, interesting. One would be around mobile speed. So it's all well and good saying, okay, we're going to go mobile first. But if the mobile speed is not fit for purpose, then you're just going to have ridiculous. What's going to that? that? Is that going to be like, uh, I don't know, website templates? Is it going to be pictures? Is there like lots of, what's going to affect that? Yeah, we call it bloatware. Essentially, it's unnecessary lines of code. So have people, like you say, gone through a template and then decided that they're going to leave some of that legacy code base in. Has it just been not coded uh, kind of efficiently? Or actually, are we having massive, massive images because we've gone for such a uh, experience that we've got the highest res images straight off the camera and we haven't thought about actually shrinking those or reducing them while maintaining quality? Are we hosting video directly on the site? Uh, in fact, we did a guest article um, for Curveball, a video production agency around here, and we were talking about why you should host video off-site and then just pull it in through an iframe as opposed to just hosting it directly on the site. So loads of different components that can slow it down. The hosting is another one. Actually, are you kind of building a beautiful site and then chucking it to share resources with thousands of other sites and paying five pound a month? Or actually saying, no, this is a sensible investment. A fast website can generate conversions, which gives me return on investment. I'm going to spend 50 pound, 100 pound, 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds a month to make sure that our site is running as quickly as possible. Interesting. Okay, cool. cool. So that is a disadvantage. Another one would be some of the payment options. So great is an advantage in some aspects. There's choice. Not so good in terms of some aren't compatible depending on region and location around the world. So actually you just need to be conscious that actually if someone's buying something in Australia or Thailand or Taiwan or wherever it is, actually sometimes that payment gateway might not be accepted. And so with choice, obviously, um, trading in the UK, yeah, crack on. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some amazing, like we've talked on the show a lot about tools like Klarna, where actually you can start split payments. And that's massively important. Imagine how now, when was the last time you saw someone buy something outright, which is over a thousand pounds. Normally it's, okay, I'll pay it off over three months, six months, 12 months, 24 months, whatever. And as we go forward, certainly coming out of coronavirus, yes, we might have more disposable income, but I only see that going up. I see more people just putting more and more stuff on credit. So another disadvantage, one of the final ones would be, it was funny, we had this conversation just before we came on around price comparisons. So obviously it's great that mobile um, is first and we're starting to adopt mobile, but it makes price comparing really easy. So we need to think actually, do we want to have our price front and center? So you're asking me, okay, how do you get a better user experience on mobile? And I was like, okay, make the price nice and easy to find, et cetera, et cetera. But actually, all of a sudden, then you just become another cog in the wheel where someone uses you as a... Uh, I think, yeah, I think, like the example you were saying about um, when shopping for jeans on Jarrell's. Yeah, you definitely want those on Google Shopping. You definitely want to know the price is good and buy it immediately. Perhaps if you're um, in B2B, that might not be the case. You might yeah. want to feel like there's, a, there's quoting going on and stuff like that. So I think we have to be conscious that people are comparing. They've got short attention spans. If you've got something, uh, something to sell, let people know what the price is pretty early on because they will be comparing. Absolutely. Well, at least let people know the benefits. Like we want to have that half and center, far front and center on the mobile, right? So what are we, we've whispered in the last 40 minutes or so, the, the power of M-commerce and mobile commerce and how hopefully those listening and watching, whether it be live or on recording, will understand that you need to start putting mobile first. It's no longer good enough to say, oh, but we're on desktop. No, no, no. I understand you've got a desktop site, but you can't neglect mobile anymore. I've been really itching to share our exciting news on the 23rd of July, which is our next webinar. So we're having a couple of weeks off because since April, we've been running these webinars every week and we've been amazed by the kind of traction that we've got and the support. It's been amazing. 
But actually, we're going to take some weeks off. But then on the 23rd of July, it's massive. We have the head of retail from KPMG, Paul Martin, joining us on a call, which is going to be incredible to hear his experience and his insights. He's been right on the front line with some of these brands going through this pandemic. So to be able to share his insights is going to be fascinating. And so I suggest uh, some details will be coming out of that soon. And I suggest you all sign up. It will be a great, great show. And apart from that, Louise, I just wanted to thank you uh, for being a wonderful co-host of the last kind of 10 or 12 weeks. We've had a fantastic time. I hope everyone listening has enjoyed it. And um, yeah, any questions, please feel free to put in the chat. And go audit your website or Amazon experience for mobile right now. Do it. Make it on the list of things to do this month. There we go. <laughs> great job. Thanks very much for joining. If there's no other questions. Um, have a great afternoon. See you later.